Every now and then, someone really captures your attention. Our first guest is a standout for several reasons. He's a big personality and has an even bigger voice. As an accomplished singer, he's performed on stages all around the world. But many of us first came to know him from his incredible blind audition on the show, The Voice. Get misty just listening to your voice. Oh my gosh, he represented the Rosenberg Houston area very well. Good morning to John Holiday. Good morning to you, Miss Duncan. I have to say, Miss Duncan, until you tell me how you Deborah. I just love you so much. Oh, I love you back. You call me Deborah all you want. And there's a reason why your last name is Holiday because your voice is something to celebrate. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you, know, you. I, I feel like, though, I'm a little underdressed. I feel like I should probably go ahead and put this hat on right here so that we can, you know, there you go. <laughs> uh, anyway, hats off to you. I remember that audition that you did. I was standing in the kitchen doing the dishes and all of a sudden I ran to the TV set and I was like, what is this? It was so amazing. But let's uh, back up. We know where you are. Let's back up and find out how you got there. Uh, grew up in Rosenberg, small town. A lot of people would think not a lot of opportunities there, but you found it to be the opposite. Yes. I, you know, growing up in Rosenberg, there were so many opportunities that were afforded to me because what I find in Rosenberg is that there's such a great sense of community. And it feels to me still today that the community is a place that is so nurturing of, of my gift. And I can still remember teachers of mine, uh, Mrs. Phelan, who used to pick me up in the morning and take me to school uh, so I could do, you know, grammar work and things like that in, in, in the classroom. So that's the kind of community that I grew up in. So I felt so privileged to have that love and to still have that love today, you know, growing up and being a part of the Fort Bend Voice Choir uh, with Mr. William R. Adams, who they are celebrating their 40th year. Uh, uh, it's just a fantastic, fantastic place. Yeah. And your your love of music, as, as we say oftentimes, for you was in your DNA. You had family all around you that loved music. Yes, my grandmother, who I lovingly call Big Mama, she's still <laughs> with us today. Uh, she was a teacher, but also she was the music minister at my church. So we were in church all day because you know she would play the piano everywhere, and so. Growing up with her, I wanted to be just like her. I wanted to emulate what she did. Uh, so I learned how to play the piano. My mother uh, is also a singer and a clarinetist. My father, I didn't know this for a long time, but my father could sing. Uh, so my whole entire family, there's not one person in my family that I can think of who can't hold a note. Everybody can sing. You're your own so, choir. Yeah, you are all your own church choir. Speaking of church choirs, you did your first solo uh, early on, around six, seven years old. And what was that experience like and what did you sing? I think that's kind of the first time you saw, you you loved music, but you saw the power of music. Yes, totally. I was probably in the first grade, maybe, and I had been asked to sing Let There Be Peace on Earth for a Christmas concert. And it actually happened at Travis Elementary School in Rosenberg. So, and I remember thinking to myself, okay, I, you know, I'll do it. You know, I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know what's gonna come out, but I'm gonna sing this song. And um, I just remember the power of connection, the, the, the power of love, the, the spirit that I could feel with, um, with the audience, even at that young age, I remember people crying and teachers crying and I thought, well, maybe I can really sing. Oh. Um, so I'm really lucky to yeah. have that experience. Yeah, and you further had this music, or this experience with music when you said that music saved you from feeling sad and feeling what you call othered. Oh yes, totally. For me, I think, you know, growing up as, as a young black gay kid, it's very easy, especially when I grew up, uh, to be othered. You know, you were othered for being different. 
and even before that, I think because I had such a high pitched voice, a uh, singing voice, before I even knew what being gay was, I was always, you know, other because I was different. Um, so for me, I can remember being very young uh, and I had a dog, a, a black Labrador named Sassy. So I would take <laughs> Sassy outside and I would sing to Sassy whenever I was sad, but I never let any of the things that people would call me or do to me stop me from from singing or pursuing music because I, I could feel that at even a very young age that it was important for me to follow that that feel good feeling, that feel good feeling of knowing that you are on, you know, in the purpose that I think that God has for you, so. Yeah, you know, a lot of people who sing as well as, well, I was, I was gonna say, a lot of people who sing as well as you do, there aren't a lot of people who sing as well as you do, but a lot of people who have a great voice kind of bypass the higher education and go straight into a singing career. You didn't do that. You got your bachelor's and master's degrees in vocal performance, your artist diploma from Juilliard. What made you decide to do that? It was, you know, growing up in my house with my mother, uh, and my grandmother, you know, my, around and my grandmother's sister, my aunt Brenda around, it was really stressed upon us the idea that education uh, was important. And, you know, for anything that you wanted to do, if you had your education, you could do it. You know, if you had your little piece of paper, as my, my aunt would say, you would do, you would be able to do anything. And so for me, it was the idea of going to college to stretch my, you know, to my, stretch my arms out, stretch my legs and see what that experience was like and to learn more because no matter how good you are at something, there's always something better that you can do in that uh, area of, of expertise or specialty. So I was really excited to go to Southern Methodist University in Dallas, Texas on a full scholarship and then go to the University of Cincinnati. Uh, for my master's and in the Juilliard School. So I feel really privileged and honored to have been, uh, you know, to have been a recipient of degrees from those schools because they are top notch universities. And, uh, and you know, I'm, I'm at my nature, very curious. So just wanting to learn more and now also being an associate professor of music. So I'm, I'm also a professor at Lawrence University. Yeah, it comes so. full circle teaching that that next group of, of how to really use that voice as as their gift. All right, uh, you mentioned being the high pitched voice, the counter tenor, highest range for a man's voice. And that's what got my attention when I was washing the dishes at night. And I, I saw you in shadow and I knew something had to be different. I'm like, that's not a woman's voice. That is That is a man singing, right? Well, that high range of voice, um, you know, I got to sing the national anthem at the Astros game and I thought, drop the mic, I'm done. Uh, you have done, have, have performed in the world's best stages, Carnegie Hall, the Kennedy Center, Lincoln Center, London and uh, um, uh, Barbican Center and the Philharmonie de Paris, right? Uh, and you just performed at the Hollywood Bowl. People loved this because we have been in lockdown for so long, we we're able to get out and celebrate music again. Oh, it was incredible to be at the Hollywood Bowl, a 17,500 seat venue. I think they were at 75% capacity and that's about 13,000 people. So it just felt like an arena singing for so many people and being back with Los Angeles Philharmonic and Maestro Dudamel. It was quite the experience being able to share some of the music that Ella Fitzgerald did there and uh, getting to share with the audience afterwards all the new music that's coming. So I'm really excited about that experience at the Hollywood Bowl. It was mm. beautiful. And you are performing at the Met in December? Yes, I'll be at the Met in December in, uh, in their production of Eurydice, which I actually, I premiered that role uh, in Los Angeles in February of 2020, right before the lockdown happened, so. Yeah, and when that lockdown happened, you had been pursued by the, to, to audition for The Voice before, but you were busy doing other things. But when, when a lot of those things kind of went away during the, the lockdown, uh, you were able to do that and, and expose your voice to so many more people. We so enjoyed watching you take that journey and rooting for you as somebody who was from these parts, as we say. You've always performed a variety of styles and got to see that through the voice but you have a new single coming alive in me yes i'm so excited about this new music it's been it's been quite a journey of of love quite really literally of love and of uh reimagining of what what it is to to be me what what it is to be in love around a new love 
uh, and that's what the entire album really is about, is reimagining singing, oh. reimagining love in my life. And Alive in Me is this incredible song that uh, Chantal Craviazic and uh, Nathan Chapman wrote. And I just feel so lucky to bring it alive. And I think it's a beautiful piece uh, about love being so deeply rooted inside of you that it's aching to come out. Um, so it's a song for everyone, everyone. And I'm just so excited that it's finally out. In Houston, you have to stream it. You have to, you have to listen. Yeah, in fact, we're gonna give them a little listen uh, toward the end of the show. But in the meantime, I love your, your message of being kind goes full circle back to that first time you stood up and sang in front of a group of people. And that's, you know, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Pick up the next line. Uh, with every step I take, it's been a long time, Deborah. I can't oh, think. Oh, yes. It, I love, love, love your voice. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We wish you the best of luck, and I cannot wait to meet you in person. Thank you so much, Deborah. It was right. wonderful being with you. Let me put my hat back on. Wait, which way does it go? There we go. <laughs> there we go. All right. Thank you, John. Thank you. And we will hear John's new single, Alive in Me, later in the show, and look for his full EP, which will be released in December.